In this video, we're going to look at the task in detail and also about the different sorts of feasibility tests that you're going to need to do. Let's begin with the task itself. This was the simple overview, conduct a feasibility study of different solutions for the client requirements. We've seen that before. But unfortunately, the full task as seen from the assessment guidance is slightly more complex, but I'm sure this will make sense to you. Based on the client requirements established in P2, learners should identify potential solutions and undertake a feasibility study. The feasibility study should consider the client and or user need for which the application solution is to be designed. The study must consider whether the proposed solutions are technologically possible, estimates of likely cost of development, any laws will apply to the solutions and their development, how well each of the proposed solutions meets the identified needs of the clients, the impact that each will have, and the resources required for the development of each solution and likely timescales, the evidence with the document feasibility study and proposed solutions. Well, I hope that's crystal clear to you. Um, on the off chance that there's one or two things that don't make sense to you there, I thought I'd break it down slightly so that you could possibly get this in more bite-sized chunks. So that, that long list there actually breaks down to these items here. You will identify potential solutions. You know that based on the client requirements that you've already gathered as part of uh, P1 and M1 and P2. So from there, you need to consider, and this is the this is the feasibility study part. First of all, how well each solution meets the client's needs. Now you're going to need to revisit that bullet point across all of these different feasibility tests that you're going to need to do. How well your solution meets the client needs. Need to keep coming back to that. First of all, is the solution technologically possible? Can it technically be done? And how will it be done? what's the likely cost of development going to be and you will have to produce estimates based on your research to show what it'll cost for all the the labor for all the software the hardware and so on the development next which laws will apply to uh, to this solution and what will what will the client and the customers need to do to meet those laws to abide by those laws what about the impact that this solution is going to have on the day-to-day -day life of the client and the client's customers? Will they have to do things differently as a result of your solution? What about resources required? What are you going to need? What are you going to need to buy? And lastly, how long will it take? But how long will each part of it take? And it'll be a Gantt chart for producing that. So that that slide there is your to-do list for the feasibility study. But rather than leave it um, as, as that list, we can break it down into types of feasibility, which makes it easier for you to understand. So these are the feasibility tests that you will need to do. These are the five mini essays that you're going to have to write. First of all, technical. Is it technically possible to achieve this solution and how will you do it? and offer some alternatives. Secondly, economically, what will it cost? Do your research, show the costings. Thirdly, scheduling, that'll be a Gantt chart showing how long each stage will take in terms of time. And there'll be, there'll be more on that later on. Fourthly, uh, operational, what changes day to day? What are people gonna have to do to incorporate this new product into their workflow, client and the client's customers? And then we look at the legal, the legal ramifications of collecting client data. And it's gonna mainly be GDPR, but there are one or two other considerations as well. So these five mini essays that we've got here, one, two, three, four, five, those are your five mini essays that you'll need to write for the feasibility study. But within each of those, you're gonna keep needing to refer back to how does each solution meet the user requirements and that always always brings it back to what you said you were going to do what are your success criteria what are the goals and the objectives of your of your enterprise and have you met them at the end <laughs> 